Okay, hi everyone. Now, I know what you're probably doing. You're probably on the bus. You're thinking, I'm bored on this bus. What could I possibly do to learn more about economics? And what you're doing is you're watching this video, so good on you, right? Now, you're going to be tempted to fast forward stuff. Don't. Just check whether you actually know it. So, first of all, I'm going to do all the diagrams you need to know at the minute for macroeconomics, so my side of the course. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the AD thing. Now, we did this first, and some of you still aren't that great at this, so you need to learn this. So... We've got the AD line, which looks like this. I wish it had been thicker. Oh, well, we'll deal with it. Okay, so the AD line looks like that. Now, this AD line can either go right, where you'd have AD1 and AD2, like that, or it can go, I'm going to have a different colour, it can go left. Now, just very quickly, which one's more and which one's less? Think about that for yourself for a second. Right, you probably thought about it, and if you go left, it is less. So left is less. That is something you need to remember for every, every single diagram you do. Okay, so what are the factors that can make AD go left or right? They are anything that changes in C plus I plus G plus X minus M. Now just to go through them really quickly, and I'm hoping you guys know these ones, but C stands for consumer spending, and consumer spending is about 60% of AD, so it's quite a big part of AD. I stands for investment, and remember, investment is spending by firms on capital goods. Um, G stands for government spending. And then X, annoyingly, remember, stands for exports. And really importantly here now, there's a minus here. So M stands for imports. So therefore, if there's an increase in imports, it actually makes AD go down because of this minus. Right, so I'm going to give you a factor. You're going to try and draw it on your own diagram very quickly. So if I was to say interest rates were to go up, what would happen to AD? So pause the video and decide. Okay, so if interest rates went up, people would consume less. So consumer spending, this one here, would go down. The reason why is if interest rates are higher, people are going to take out less loans. They're going to, take, they're going to save more in banks because they'll get more back on it. And the big one that I always like talking about is people's mortgage interest repayments will go up. So they'll have to pay back more on their mortgage each month, which means they'll actually have less money to spend. So consumer spending will go down. If you want to be picky as well, investment will probably go down as well because firms will stop um, buying goods using loans of themselves. Okay, so both those things mean AD will go to the left. So AD is going this way to the left. Right, now we're going to draw the diagram um, to show that interest rates have gone up. Now this, you've got to get good at, you have to. So if you don't know how to do it, try and pause it first, have a go, and then see my version. So anyway, we've said interest rates have gone up, which means consumer spending has gone down, and investment's gone down. And both those factors are part of C plus I plus G plus X minus M, so we know AD is going to go down. So as soon as you know AD is going to go di down, the diagram's very easy to draw. Remember, you've got price level here and real GDP here. Right, draw your first AD line like that, but don't draw your second AD line yet. It's much easier if you draw the other line first. So I draw, I'm going to just draw a short one AS line like that, a straight one. Later on you're going to draw a different line, you're going to draw that curvy line that we've been doing, but just for the minute so I can show you, just have it straight. Okay, now before I do anything else, I normally do my dotted lines now. It just means I won't get confused later on. So I'm going to call that price one, and I'm going to call, call this y one, which is income one. Okay, now this is me, my first AD line, so I call it AD one. I know Mr. Thompson calls that AD, AD, but I like to call it AD one. Then I've decided AD is going down, so I'm going to do another line to the left. And that's how I draw it, and I put that AD two. Now it's really easy to do the dotted lines. Whoops, in blue. I'm going to call that y two and then call this P2. So from this diagram, there's a couple of things you can say about the economy because demand's gone down. One thing you can definitely say is, as you can see, inflation has gone down, so price level has gone down. The second thing you can say is, output GDP has gone down. Now this isn't very good, because if GDP goes down, the country's getting less money. 
And what we've probably learned this week in economics is cyclical unemployment might happen at this point because there's less demand in the economy. So therefore, you don't need as many workers. Because if you remember, demand for workers is derived from demand for goods and services. OK, so that's AD. All that means is whenever you want to try and shift that AD line right or left, it's always going to be some factor of C plus I plus G plus X minus M. Whenever any of those change, the AD line will shift.